Hello everybody, Donkey here, and yes, we are back with some more Train Sim 2022. And this time we are back on the Great Western Mainline DLC, and we have a very nice Class 166 in uh, Network Southeast livery, and uh, this is the uh, Turbo Express. And uh, this scenario we are doing today is called Oxford Bound. Yeah, haven't really played about with the 166 very much, but um, yeah, this is 166220, and uh, yeah, we are going to be using this today. Have, like I say, I haven't really used this loco before, so uh, it will be interesting. But I like that tubular sort of uh, city commuter look of these of these uh, DMUs. But yeah, before we get going, I just want to say, if you are a new viewer and you haven't already, please subscribe down below. It's completely free, and we're trying to reach a thousand subs. Alright, let's jump in and get going. Okay, here we are. Uh, you take over the pre from the previous driver here at Reading. This service is for Oxford, stopping at every station. Passengers must board the train here before departing. Right. So, let's uh, get the doors open. And uh, let's set up. So I haven't used this loco before, so uh, it's going to be an interesting one. Window wipers. Uh, let's get some headlights on to begin with. And uh, have we got cab lights. Doesn't seem like it. Sometimes these uh, locos are very basic. Window wipers, sander, and set off when ready. Well, we have a red at the moment, so there's the guard. Headlights, uh, we want set to day. It'll go. Okay, I think that's it. Tail lights. Doesn't seem that we have an interior light. I'm still on red at the moment. Yeah, it doesn't look like we have train uh, train lighting. Can't do anything there. Can't. Now oh, we've got a green now. So DRA off. It's the brake. We can bring down. Interesting. So it's got a combined brake and power lever by looks things. Um, which is very much like the locos we've used previously. And yeah, this is a, uh, I believe a DMU. It'll have a... Uh, It'll have a diesel engine powering it. And uh, I did not check to see if we were breaking the speed limit or not. Um, so we're arriving Tilehurst, 8 o'clock. So we better just get up to speed. Yeah, sometimes these locos don't have interior lights. Um, not sure why. They're just not modelled in, I don't think, sometimes. And we're getting up to speed now. But I will increase the lighting in Sony Vegas. That's a bit of a weird uh, power brake. I can't get it to zero, but we'll, we'll leave it on 10%. That's fine. Not sure if there's a speed set on this. No idea. The 166 is one of those uh, locos that is very interesting. Uh, and it just looks like that classic shape, that tubular sort of commuter city shape. Oh. Haven't used this before, this loco. Um, 
I'm not even sure there's other scenarios using this loco, to be honest. Um, this is pretty much the only scenario I've seen on the game. We might have needed to break up. It's going to be close. Yeah, we're going to overshoot. We were shot by quite a bit, but that's okay. We'll still get the tick for it. But um, yeah, I need to break a lot more. I need to be coming in here a lot slower than what I did. Wait, so we can head out now. Might be getting a bit of wheel slip there. As we head out. This is one of those, like I say, I haven't used before, so it is one that uh, I haven't really, I don't really know the braking distance, I don't really know, you know, where all the controls are, I don't know sort of power for it, so it is interesting. We only have 10 stops. I believe this scenario is about 40 minute scenario, so not too bad. So I'll tell you a little bit about the uh, loco now. So uh, it was in service started in 1993 and uh, still runs to today like present day they still use the 166 um, it's normally seen in a three car configuration a three car DMU and it was built by ABB York Maximum speed of 90 miles per hour as well. And it replaced the uh, the class 117, the 119, and the 121, which is quite cool. But yeah, they still use it to this very day. Um, oh, and there seems to be one on Trains in World 2 as well, which I didn't know about. But this one, uh, I don't know, it just looks really bubble like on the front. It doesn't look like a normal 166, I don't know. Have they changed it for the network southeast or what? Let's get a nice screenshot. Start applying the brake early now. Yeah. I'm hoping this is going to be enough. <laughs> Station is right there. This might be enough. It's a fine line between release the brakes and actually applying them. This should be alright, 28 mile an hour. I don't see us needing to drop any lower than this. It's quite a long station as well, this one. Easily get a three car in here. What time are we supposed to arrive here? 8.04. So we are a minute late, but that's okay. And uh, we'll apply the DRA. Oh, the door, did the doors open automatically there?
unfortunately we didn't make it up to maximum speed down this stretch but uh the next station is coming up I must say this uh, Great Western Mainline DLC I'm not too sure when this came out for the game but it's you know it's not looking it's not looking the greatest compared to the newer routes that are that are coming out the uh, the newer routes that are coming out they do look a hundred times better than this this is very blocky and it looks very old but then again this probably came out you know a long time ago the newer routes that are coming out on train soon now look really really good But I'm not complaining, this is classic train sim after all. We're going to have to really put the brakes on for this, I think. <laughs> but yeah, uh, old train sim, like I've said in the past, has got, you know, a certain charm about it. Cla like, train sim classic. Yeah, train sim world looks amazing and there's a lot of stuff in it, but there just isn't that charm like train sim classic has. And it's why I keep coming back to the classic train sim is because it just has a charm about it it just looks really good and uh, plays really well <laughs> it's why OMSI does so well OMSI looks like crap but it, it's about the playing and the enjoyment of it which it plays really well well two minutes now actually Get them gone. At least we're doing better than the uh, Birmingham Cross Line video we did. We missed a station on the Birmingham Cross Line and uh, it screwed the whole scenario. It basically mean, meant I failed the scenario. So <laughs> I will have to go back and complete that scenario. But uh, we will be playing more Birmingham Cross Line. I'm just trying to get a custom liveried... Um, 323 actually actually on that on that scenario it is difficult though um, 3.7 oh we have announcements very nice Yeah, I'm, uh, oh yeah, I'm trying to get a custom liveried, because in the Birmingham Cross Line it's great, but um, the liveried 323 that you get on every scenario is a London Midland uh, livery, which is great. I don't mind that livery, but I wanted a um, uh, West Midlands Railways livery, you know, the orange one. Um, 323, which they do on alanthompsonsim.com. Someone has made a livery in uh, for the, the uh, 323. Um, you basically have to go into the editor and basically swap out the two locos. I've been having trouble doing that. Um, I've been doing it and then the scenario has been basically saying you know I'll, I'll load the scenario up and it's failed to load it the scenario so then I have to sort of verify the game files on Steam to basically remove that that loco that shouldn't be in there so I've been having problems with it uh, I should probably just copy the scenario put it in and then if it doesn't work delete the scenario which is the smart thing to do, but I'd be trying to replace the loco in the actual scenario. Um, yeah, maybe I should just copy the scenario and do it, but hey-ho, I'll get round to it eventually, it just takes time. But we will play with a, uh, I think it's a West Midlands Railways um, livery. Um, 
but I just like it on because I like to be able to see what's going on in the camp. It's not too bad if it's like a bright scenario where it's like middle of the day, but it's gonna be quite annoying on video. But I I will edit it in in my uh, in my in my Sony Vegas, and I will probably lighten the lighten the uh, video up, and I I restore the colours on the train sim and pretty much most of my videos because if you look at it. it Train sim always looks a bit grey to me. Like I know that's obviously it's trying to show we're in England and stuff, but it always looks a bit grey and the colours look washed out. So I colour correct the video and uh, make the colours pop a little bit more and make it look a little bit better. Just wait for the guard. There it is. Alright, we're getting through it. Oxford is 15 mile away. It takes ages for this thing to actually power up, which is really annoying. <laughs> We'll get there eventually then. This might be close again. Just be on point. Just on point, I think. I think it's just turned green. There's something waiting there, though. There's something there. Is that 47 waiting there? As he's freight, he uh, has less priority on the, on the main line than we. We are passengers, so we have priority a lot of the time. Okay, four more stops to go. Didn't quite hit, he's very busy. It's three of the same man there. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Getting the controls. We'll ease it up to this. We only have a 25. Pay attention. Apple Ford, not too far away. Don't really know where the exhausts are on this thing. I think it's I think they're in between the carriages, the exhausts. One's there. And one's back there. Not too sure on the uh the one six six. I know sometimes the exhausts uh can be underneath and they can just be straight on the roof line.
Swamp is going to be the longest part of the scenario, I think, as it is, you know, these are quite close to each other and then Oxford's quite a ways away, nine mile. We are on a slow bit of the line now, so I imagine this is probably a branch line. We probably were on the main line, that's why we were doing the speed we were doing. You know, but this is a, probably a branch line now. Coming up to it. I haven't been given a 90 though. This is, this loco does have a max speed of 90. Sometimes it says up here, but. Yeah, this Sloco does have a max speed of 90 mile an hour. And you can see Kelham is relatively close to Appleford. A few smaller stations now. I think Didcot was probably the largest one we'd sort of been to. These are going to be quite small stations now, I think. This being a branch line. They're not going to be the grandiose sort of mainline stations. We are really behind now. We were supposed to get here at 8.23, it's now 8.27. <laughs> uh, we're very behind, but uh, it's fine. It's fine. I've turned scoring off anyway, uh, just because I dislike it. I, I don't feel like the scoring means much to me. Some people really, it does mean a lot. Uh, and they do try and go for the best score they can. But me, I just enjoy the drive. And so uh, I've turned it off because as long as the as long as I've completed the scenario, I don't really mind how I did in it. Um, it's more replayability, but I've got so many scenarios and so many uh, DLCs on this game that you know I might never replay this scenario ever again. I might replay it in the next five years I I don't know it's one of those where I could theoretically you know swap the loco out for something else in this scenario it's literally uh, I don't know whether I'll play it ever again so I don't really care what I how well I do in the scenario if I fail the scenario it's a bit different I will go back and complete the scenario because I like seeing that tick next to the scenario. I don't know if there's a way in Train Sim you can tick scenarios that you've done because in the game you obviously have to complete the scenario for it to tick it as done. But uh, I, I, you know that, that Birmingham Cross Line one, I've done that scenario but it hasn't got a tick next to it because I failed it. So I don't know if there's actually a way to tick it to say I've done it even though I failed it but I don't know maybe you'd have to delve into the game code or something all that it's not something I'm familiar with the game code in this game <laughs> to be honest I've only just started getting into um, custom locos for the game, you know, third party stuff like Armstrong Powerhouse and uh, custom liveries that people have made for the locos and swapping that out in the editor. I've only just got into that. I know people have been doing it for years, um, 
and they, you know, they know what they're doing, but, uh, yeah, I just, I'm just getting into it, I'm just sort of at the tip of the iceberg, I'm still playing the Dovetail stuff on Steam, the Steam Marketplace, uh, and I'm starting to just delve into that other stuff. When I've sort of done all the all the stuff on Steam and the the official dovetail stuff, I probably will just you know dive into the uh, the third party stuff a lot harder. But yeah, at the moment I'm sort of just sticking with the dovetail stuff just because it's a little bit easier to uh, to get around. You know, a lot of the third party stuff like Armstrong Powerhouse, you look at the scenario requirements and it basically requires their whole catalog. Um, or thereabouts to actually run the scenario which I don't have so yeah it's a little bit difficult third party stuff you know a lot of the time you do need other third party stuff to make it work which is alright if you've you know you're ahead of the curve and you've bought it all before you know and you were there at the start sort of thing you got it all but for me it's a big big undertaking and a lot of the third party stuff tends not to run that well with the game. I mean, it does. They've made, like, a lot of the Alan Thompson sims seems they've made it stable. And uh, they actually, you know, pride themselves on making a nice, stable experience. But, uh, yeah, I just find the dovetail stuff to just work in game. You can jump in, play it, not a problem. Um, but there are a few things that dovetail do do. Uh, a bit sketchily and there are things that Dovetail do that I think maybe they shouldn't have done that that's a bit of that's a bit scumbaggery but uh, all in all if I'm enjoying playing the game third party or not I mean it, it, it's served its purpose it has filled an enjoyment so uh, I'm not really too bothered I don't like to pick sides. <laughs> Some people defend Dovetail with their last dying breath, and others curse them and will never buy anything from Dovetail ever again. Um, I'm sort of in the middle. Um, I tend not to pick a side. There's great Dovetail stuff, there's great third party stuff. All in all, it makes for a really good train sim experience. Okay, we are definitely rolling into here a bit late, but uh, that's fine. I've enjoyed my time in the 166, and in the, in the uh, Network Southeast livery, it looks absolutely amazing. I don't know if you can do anything with the head code. No, it doesn't look like it. But yeah, the Network Southeast livery, it's looking gorgeous. Really, really cool. Smaller town here. I think two major. I don't like hitting at 100% but sometimes it is necessary to be able to slow down in time. <laughs> Okay, last stop, Oxford, and that is five mile away.
Thank you, um, God, for buzzing us. That's cool that they've got that on there. There's a few here that I actually forget. When uh, Foxtrot's one, I always forget. Juliet. Lima. Quebec. That's, uh, that's <laughs> Oscar. Oscar Whiskey Tango. Yeah, there's a few. That's quite cool that they've got it on there, but I do forget some of them sometimes. Really, you should know them if you're an avid military buff. I am. <laughs> I, I, I consider myself a military buff. Alright. The big hall to Oxford. And this will be the end of the scenario. So I just want to say before we come to the end here, if you haven't seen the other content on my channel and you want to see more train sim or any other sim related content, go to the channel and check it out. Also subscribe down below, oh, I don't know if we're going to stop in time here, <laughs> that was a bit harsh there. Yeah, also subscribe down below. Uh, it is completely free to subscribe, and we are trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So uh, if you can happily subscribe, that would help us out a lot. And uh, we have come to the end. So let's jump outside and uh, see what's up. So that was the 166 and we were playing with it on the uh, Great Western Mainline DLC and we did the scenario Oxford Bound um, which was quite interesting, it was quite good. I did enjoy the 166 in uh, Network South East here, looks really really good. So yeah, if you're a new viewer and you haven't already please subscribe down below and uh, I will see you in the next one, bye bye.